School updates. We're going to be doing build a paramotor, design a package for the pilot, schedule the training. And we're going to start doing package deals at the Kylo School of Paramotor. Of course, anybody who's in the school is welcome to come and go, as always, as much as they please. And I, I smile upon that because if it's good, I'm out there. We're working and I'm offering advice and telling you where you need you at in your progression. That's my job as a coach is to help you progress to self-sufficient, sustaining pilot. As a coach or instructor, I'm a resource but I'm also going to provide the crafts. I can build these things. I'm not even test flown the thing yet, but I know it's going to fly just fine. I do. I do. There may be an issue, but I'll solve it. I'll solve the problem. I know how these things work. I know all aspects of the geometry, the physics, the torque offsets, everything there is to know about paramotors. I've studied and I got it and I'm excited to show you this thing, but it's not ready yet. I still don't even have parts here yet. I've built the stuff that goes to the parts, but it's, it's, it gonna be pretty cool. It gonna be pretty cool. I, I hear you, cat. I hear you. It's going meow. All right, then. Let me get to that. I got some designing to do. Thank you for joining me for this uh, Kylo progress update. Now, let's get to this video that I originally made, and we'll see whatever in the hell that is. I don't know yet. I'm not to that point. That'll be tomorrow or the next day. I'll see y'all real soon. Much love. Kyle out where we left off i had to install the front steering yeah there's one of the new cats too so that's my steering pegs and then i had to do some foot pegs for the passenger so i did a little something weird here a little cut grind a little geometry welded in the parts that needed to be there most of what i actually do is take these earmuffs off and put this mask off and on and switch it out with this welding hood that's what's really going on out in this mother Boy, I'm even stuck now. Yeah, my parallel bars. I don't want those slagged up. Let me go hide those. I think that might make a fancy foot pig. Everyone knows if you paint your steel an aluminum color, it takes off a few pounds just by doing that. Here we are again with your standard bad content from the truck. We're on the home stretch, at least so I think. I still got parts to put on. There's a lot to do, but the paint's drying. Can you see the paint? Uh, I'm gonna run off the road and die. So when the paint's dry, we're ready for the final assembly, as in once we put it together, we don't have to take it apart again, unless it's some unforeseen thing, but I pretty much got everything thought out. All my hardware came in today, my wheels, I got air in the tires, the final tires, not the ones it's been sitting on. So I'm I'm excited to test fly it, but I'm also excited to unveil it. Like there's something to be said for sharing the design. I don't know if people are copied or whatever. I come up with my own stuff, my own reasons for it. I've been fixing paramotors for a long time, building paramotors for a long time. I put them together out of other pieces. Every now and then I fabricate one. I built the Dirty Bird, of course. That was a quite the undertaking several months of work but i was able to whip this one out in a couple of weeks and i imagine the more i do it the faster i'm gonna get at it and uh i'm gonna find a groove build some wheels yo build some wheels there is a market for guys out there that want to learn to fly with wheels and that's their best option and boy oh boy i was not wrong for not doing them for a long time i was busy with other things I had a full line at the door always been people waiting to train i have to schedule time off to get time off basic so that's what i'm looking at training starts up in a few days i'm right on schedule i'm right on schedule i put in the work did the time i've been doing the time oh my god doing the time i made it out to the field now i'm, I'm probably late but conditions were a little gusty i'm in no hurry got a guy doing wheels tonight and He'll be doing his fourth or fifth flight. I can't remember. I lost count. I always lose count. I don't worry about the numbers. Never have. 
I counted my own flights for quite a while. It's up to you personally. But frankly, I just can't keep up. I don't know. He's done some touch and goes too. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to cut the vlog here and go to work. Thanks for watching. I'll see y'all real soon next one. What's up? Kyle out. And of course, after the paint dries, it's on to final assembly. Now these are the wheels. Nice chrome rims. No, they're not chrome. They're aluminum. So this was kind of a semi-final assembly. Tanks installed, wheels installed. I'm doing the cabling here, cutting, putting it on. Now this cabling failed. I'm going to show you that in an upcoming clip uh, just ahead here. But ultimately, I've, uh, I've got that fixed now. Am I the only one that ever leaks gas on myself? Well, I finally made one of these. We're going to see if it leaks gas. So if you're ever trying to skimp out on getting a swager and you get these swageless connections here, you see how they just bite on the cable? That's a swage connection right there. That's the strongest connection. But these, these swages connections, I, I had a good idea with it, but I ultimately returned those and got different connections now. If you're getting fuel, it's always good just to leave a gas can with 40 bucks under it at your friend's airplane hangar. Maybe he'll fill it up. Oh, wait. Sometimes it's easy to tell how many mornings in a row you've been to the field. How many empty coffee mugs is in the truck? They was piling up. Oh shit. I'm pretending like I'm surprised, but I seen that shit as I was driving in, but forgot about it. And I seen it again and realized I gotta clean that shit up. After that, it was on to throttle installation, fuel line plumbing, safeties, and then we go to the first crank. You know what this is? is a it's a hot wire. We're gonna hot wire the trike and do the first start. Okay, we ready? Yeah. Fire in the hole. Got it. Ghetto starter. We didn't break anything, so I feel pretty good about that. Should I do a test drive around the yard? Pull starting attempts were a total fail. I was unable to do a pull start from the pilot seat, but standing next to it, it was successful. But hey, it's got an electric starter, so booyah. <laughs> First taxi went off without a hitch. I was just kind of testing how it was driving, also doing the engine break in. So I'm just kind of blipping on it, running it low power, just seeing how she rolls, how it runs, going through some tests. Pretty boring footage actually, but this is it. Y'all don't know him, but I do. I found a bit of damage on a wing. And up we go. And we got some special flaps over here on the, on the edge of it. <laughs> okay, that's it for your evening dose, Kylo. I got to get to work. Bye. I got a little too excited here and jumped the gun. Before I put the safeties on the lower part of the hoop, I chopped a line on my first launch attempt. That's what you're seeing right here. Oh no, do I hear that too? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The line got cut. So it went from field training to how to repair a line or install it. I think I made a line for this one. Yeah, yeah, I'd made it and installed it that day and corrected the problem. Later that day, we had installed some temporary safeties made out of bungee cord, which also turned out to be a total fail on a future flight. But it worked good enough to get the thing up, and this is my initial test flight. This is the first flight, first taxi. Came right off the ground. Check it out. How does it fly? Let's see. Power reports to the... Whoa. Power loss at full power there. That's engine trouble, but that's how we diagnose it. Okay, it's stuttering at high power, so that means it probably most likely needs a carburation adjustment. We'll let it idle for just a second and descend some. Here you can really feel the torque on that thing. Wing connections look good. Everything's flying just fine. I think I'm gonna come around and maybe do one touch and go, see how she flies there. Make sure there's no traffic around. 
There's an airplane. There is traffic. Yay. So even though I was having engine problems, it was functioning perfectly at a low power setting. So I continued to fly it and made another lap with a low to medium power setting without any coughing going on with the engine. So if you're wondering why I didn't just land because I'm having trouble, well, I already sort of diagnosed the trouble. But here's touch and go. Of course I'm having engine trouble right when there's an airplane nearby. We'll go over the top of them here. Nice. Update. We're doing uh during flight testing, student training activities out here at the Kylo School. Looks like everybody's at the field. Jake's already left in the crop duster. This plane's hanging out. We're going down here to um, adjust the carburetor. The Pelini was throwing a bit of a fit yesterday. So I'm going to go down here and do a carb adjustment. Now, it's, it seems complicated, but you take the carburetor top off. You look at... When you're doing carburetor work, if you just pay close attention to how things come apart, you can quite easily put them back together. Never force anything. And always look for, just study it. Get somebody that's touched one before to help you if necessary. But they're not super advanced things. They mix air and gas with some little valves and tubes and things. So, we're gonna go down here and check this out. I'm late, I had a cacophony of mishaps this morning. He said he don't care if he's on YouTube. <clears throat> you need to take a nervous shit or anything? <laughs> Good, because you're going to be in my lap. <laughs> we put bungee cord on the back cable so that if it snaps out of those turnbuckles, it'll catch it and won't go up in the prop, hopefully. All right. While you're getting situated, I'm going to go through a start up here. <laughs> Who knows how this goes? We're going to find out together. You ready? No air traffic. Looks good. All right. Here we go. I think I felt something buckle. I bet it was a turnbuckle. Oh well. Come on, mailman. Hey, the place I ordered them from is in Louisiana. They said one day shipping if you're in Louisiana. Oh. Yep. Yeah, yeah, I felt it. I wasn't going to go for it. Well, I think we could have rolled it out and survived. I'm curious about the fail safe. Did it look like it caught it? Yeah, it caught it. Oh, nice. Nice. Man, that, that 10 cents of bungee cord come in in a pinch, doesn't it? Huh. And the line guides have kept the lines out, so we had a had a failure here. Yeah, these turnbuckles are shit. When I was talking about the bungee cord, you can see the black line there that I got zip tied to the metal cable. That's in case what happened happened, the metal cable doesn't sling up into the prop and cause extra damage. Total shit. But I got the kind that's got these on each end. Same material, same style. Like everything down to that, that's what's so shitty right there. All this is good craftsmanship, as far as I can tell. So, if you're ever into swageless connections, just don't. Guess who's late for paramotor school? That's right, the teacher. I felt like I was finishing a marathon run. I was working on the, the tandem trike. I think I'm just about ready to reveal it to the world. Oh, I'm so excited. I've flown it a few times with a few different people, and there were some things that obviously go wrong with any prototype. You, you gotta work out the kinks. Formerly trained, self-trained engineering, it, it don't matter. You gotta work out the kinks. Like, sometimes you find shit that don't work, no matter how well you think you engineered it. Luckily, the biggest failures were stuff that I didn't engineer personally, but that got engineered nonetheless. So today, we're teaching airspace. Nice puffy clouds. So we cut, straightened, re-welded the axles. I had to make a geometry change to change. A geometry change to the front forks. I got those re-geometry. That's a plus. There's the guys right there. They waiting on me. I'm gonna go to work. I'll show you this thing soon. And this is what I call the weight test. I had a passenger that weighed 225 pounds and 
and we did an inflation and it looks like it was going to the right so I'm correcting right as it's inflating and we just did a taxi there and I was explaining to him again I'm using this for instructional purposes but we're just going taxiing down the taxiway getting the wings stable before we initiate takeoff there we just lift it off and I go into a shallow turn and then get back into the field now here's the situation it was just another test flight but there was a line that got hung and i just wanted to show off a little bit here i maintained the taxi had a slight collapse but i untangled the line on the move and then made a successful takeoff this is what it looks like and of course as always tandems are for instructional purposes so i was instructing the student this is their first flight on a paramotor exactly what's going on even during the collapse here i'm telling her i'm maintaining control keeping my speed flying the wing and I just get back, I'm just, I'm just talking calmly as we're doing these maneuvers here. And that's what it looks like, feels like, and should be like. So if you're not doing it like that, you're probably going outside of bounds. But anyway. It's still cutting out. And that's it as far as the build process through the initial first few test flights. There were a couple of things that came up. I've got other videos that'll be coming up soon about those. So specifically, the engine, maybe something else. I don't know. We'll figure it out. I'll be making some content. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for watching us this far. We'll see y'all real soon in the next one. What's up, y'all? Kyle out. And we're going to fly it anyway. All right. This is probably going to be the worst content on the internet.